I went shopping and then I saw a large box like this and immediately thought, can we turn this into our own do-it-yourself dough proofing box? And well, then things escalated a little bit. Let me show you. Now you might be asking the totally valid question, why do you want to have your own dough proofing box? Existing subscribers will know that I worked on a table that shows you based on how much sourdough starter you're using and based on your ambient temperature for how long approximately you should bulk ferment and proof your sourdough. Well, I didn't completely develop this on my own. I took it from Wraith NJ and just make the UX a little bit better. So all credits really go to him. Now the tricky part for your sourdough is that your ambient temperature likely changes every day. And this means that your fermentation times are always different. Now, if you were able to have a dough proofing box, which always maintains the same temperature, then this would be much easier. You could just set yourself a timer every time and you would nail the fermentation. And that's why a dough proofing box could really be awesome. Now me personally, I always like to extract a small sample from my dough. And this sample is going to show me whether my dough is done with the main fermentation process. This really enables you to ferment on point every time, regardless of the temperature. However, sometimes, especially when I'm doing experiments and when I'm showing you something, then I would like to be able to specify the temperature as well. And this is where I believe the dough proofing box could be really, really handy. Now there are already existing dough proofing boxes, but they are quite expensive. This one, for instance, is around 220 euro. And now being a very stingy German, I thought, okay, maybe I can just build this on my own. So yeah, please enjoy the footage and have fun. Then I went shopping again and got myself a thermostat controller, which can be used to power a heating mat. And the idea is using the thermostat controller, it will always either turn on the power plug or it will turn off the power plug. So this is gonna work with every kind of heating mat that has a power plug pretty much. Quite an awesome device. The thermostat I would be placing inside of this styrofoam box. Whenever the temperature is reached, the thermostat controller would turn off the heating mat. And that way I can maintain the same temperature inside of the proofer all the time. Quite a simple setup, but this one definitely works. And I was surprised how easy it is to set this up. Now one problem was the heating mat. The heating mat was a little bit too large. I got the heating mat from my mom. My mom used it to keep her doggo puppies warm. I mean, I love dogs, but still, it scented a little bit like dog, and I don't want my sourdough to, yeah, smell like doggo. Plus, it was a little bit too big. So I decided, okay, I want to get one that fits exactly my proofing box. No, it's a snake. Bye. Oh, look at this. It fits perfectly. I thought, okay, to fix the cable situation, I'm gonna drill a small hole near the bottom of the proofing box. This way I can then also properly close the box. And this is important because the heat will always circulate upwards. So I guess not the prettiest solution, but it works. Just gotta clean all this mess up right now. Yeah, in theory we are already done. We could just leave it like this and then start making our bread doughs inside. However, I'm not so satisfied with all this cable madness yet. So let's clean that up a little bit. To clean things up, I wanted to mount the thermostat controller as well as a power plug directly on the proofing box. I opted to use some glue. Probably there could have been a better way to mount it, but I thought, okay, this is gonna work. Note how my power plug has USB ports. I'm gonna use them for something awesome, which I'll be showing you at the end of this video. Just to make everything hold, I had to use so much glue. So yeah, I was out of glue and I had to go shopping again. While checking through the makeup at the drugstore, please don't ask me why, I saw some random cotton pads and thought, okay, I might have some use for them. And then back at home, my gluing action continued. Seriously, I was feeling a little bit dizzy from all that glue. And we are done. This is how it looks from the inside. This measures the temperature. This is where the cables go through. And then here on the outside, so nice cable management as well. This plug here goes into the actual power plug. 
And yeah, I think it's time to test this. How awesome would it be if I could see all the time what's happening with my dough? <laughs> and I got a cool little hack prepared right there. That's a Raspberry Pi mini computer with a camera attached. And check this out. I already set this up, but this is pretty much a live stream of whatever is going on inside of the proofer. How am I gonna install it right here? Because yeah, this is roughly also where I will be placing my dough sample, which I always use to monitor the bulk fermentation progress. And I just wanna film it right there. But then I thought, okay, the way how I always write code, I could just use some handy tooth sticks, with the tooth sticks, and just <laughs> mount it like this. And let's see if this engineering hack is going to work. <laughs> and yes, it does. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. A Raspberry Pi installed. This is going to be the sample. And now let's check if I can actually get a focus on this one. And now let's set the temperature. I'm going to be using 25 degrees Celsius. And voila, it's now going to heat up. I got my dough placed right inside. And let's see if this is going to work out or not. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to close the lid and look at this. It automatically switches to night vision. Isn't this perfect? I can just be so lazy now. I can go to another room and I can just <laughs> watch my dough grow inside of the proofing box. Let's have another look now at how I configured the Raspberry Pi. And of course, I'm gonna be including all the components that I bought in the description of the video. Now, why am I placing a raccoon inside of the dough proofer? Well, you could also be using the Raspberry Pi to monitor whatever is going on in your garden. I kind of like raccoons. Unfortunately, we don't have any of them where I live. I would love to see some of them in my garden. First of all, you have to set up your Raspberry Pi and that's using a Linux system. I'm not gonna be going that much in detail how that is done. That's written on the Raspberry Pi documentation. I'm gonna be sharing all the links in the description, of course. Next up, we need to log into our small computer and that is done using the SSH command. So in this case, uh, SSH Pi, that's the default user and then you need to find out the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. Now, I already prepared a couple of windows. I'm using the Tmux window manager. Others might be using the screen window manager. And um, I already here on the first pane set up the small script that I wrote. Well, I didn't fully write this myself. Engineers like to just copy paste stuff from all over the interwebs. So it creates a small HTML page pretty much. And then here at the bottom, there's some advanced Python code I have no idea how that actually works. Well, a little bit. I'm not that much of a Python programmer myself. So, and then what's interesting here at the bottom, it exposes the whole live stream on the port 8000. Now let's check how that looks like. <laughs> and imagine this, you are wanting to see your live stream of your dough proofer, and then suddenly <laughs> there is a gigantic raccoon hiding inside of your proofing box. So yeah. That's the live stream. Whatever is happening, it will just update here right on the website. And I wasn't so happy with the default look, so I saw this really cool style sheet here, NES CSS, because I like to play NES as well. And this really gives you amazing buttons and it gives you that retro look. And so that's also something that I added inside of the HTML, just to give it a little bit more style, pretty much. So that's the one part, that's the live stream. And to launch the live stream, you just have to start the small application, the stream pie, and then the live stream is going to be started and it's going to be exposed at the IP address of your Pi and then the port 8000 pretty much. That's the idea. So I'm gonna start this now and then I could, uh, yeah, check out the live stream. What you can't do unfortunately is you can't run two programs at the same time which connect to your camera. And by default, I just wanted to create a time-lapse. So for the time-lapse program, uh, I wrote myself a small bash script and this is using the raspi still command and then it's capturing a, an image pretty much. But it can run at the same time as the live stream. And this is always going to store the picture as latest.jpg. By the way, if you're wondering, I'm using the VI editor. I've been programming with that one for a long time. I really like it. 
but you kind of first have to learn all those uh, keyboard shortcuts. By the way, you engineers, have you ever wondered or have you ever seen the homepage of Stack Overflow? Um, I actually have never seen it, I think. Let's go there. Did you know that Stack Overflow looks like this on the homepage? <laughs> So yeah, uh, engineers just like to copy paste stuff together and pretty much you just Google and then you land on Stack Overflow somehow and then you find your uh, magic answer. So just check out those amazing, amazing shortcuts. With W on your keyboard, you go to the next word. B, you go back one word. Zero is start of the line. Dollar is end of the line. So that's pretty awesome, right? Uh, you need to learn all those keyboard shortcuts and then you will be super, super fast. Okay, enough nerding out about my editor. VI programmers always have a little bit of the disease that uh, when they always have to tell everybody that they're using VI. So yeah, that's me, sorry. Then I also wrote this small bash script here, the copy to drive, because I want all my pictures of my time-lapse to arrive on my Google Drive account. And all this is going to do is um, this is going to clone all the pictures to my Google Drive and then I will have one picture including the timestamp in there and then afterwards I can use my uh, video editing software to make a nice time lapse out of all the pictures. And then the last part to this is a small cron job uh, which is something that just runs every, in this case, every five minutes, every hour, every day of the month, every, uh, no, Yes, month, D-O, I don't know, I have no idea what that means. Um, so that just runs every five minutes pretty much. And this is gonna execute the camera script and then afterwards it will execute the copy script and that will copy the pictures right to the Google Drive. Yeah, and that's pretty much the whole uh, setup of the Pi. It of course, took me a while to put together all this code, but still, I think it's totally worth it, especially seeing how my dough is growing inside of the dough proofing box. That's really awesome. I'm gonna be sharing all the links, of course, to the programs so that you can just take them and place them on your Raspberry Pi as well, in case you want to. <laughs> I'm just gonna enjoy the raccoon inside of the dough proofer for a little bit longer. <laughs> you might be thinking, Hendrik, you over-engineered this a little bit, but one of you sent me amazing footage of his own do-it-yourself proofer, and that's really next level. I'm like here and that person is 10 times more advanced than I am. So Hannes and his master have built a similar box and look at that amazing cable management that's so much better than mine. And then that's his Raspberry Pi mounted on a piece of wood if I can see it correctly. Then some LED right there and in that corner, that's a special corner <laughs> just for the sourdough. And another heating mat right there, some additional cables, some additional LEDs, and a camera <laughs> mounted right there to take the perfect picture. And now look at this, this is even crazier. He built a small web app where you can go back in time and see how the stutter grew. And he even added some computer vision. Wow. That's next level. Good job, Hannes. I'm very curious to know what you think about my first version of my dough proofer. What should I improve? What are some other cool hacks you would integrate? Then, in the next episode, we're gonna put this dough proofer to the test. Is it gonna make me an amazing sourdough bread? See for yourself. So, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. As always, may the gluten be with you.